And over to you, Graham Good. I remember trailer Patrick Leo and Bianca saying that uh, she has to show a little bit of temperament going into the stores, and Triptyque did just that. That's it, but they're all in store for the Matchmaker International, that's it. And away they go, a mile and a quarter of the trip, and Sir Harry Lewis uh, ridden from the front again. Best advantage of his stamina, he's up with the pace early on, and that one leads, but now it's Most Welcome that comes as you take it up. Most Welcome, and Motley up on the outside. So it's Motley and Most Welcome from Sir Harry Lewis. The pace is strong, Alan Lord is four, Love the Groove five, Shady Height six, Triptyque seven, Sharp Noble eight. Ascot Knight is racing very wide of the group, and last of all is Chaumier. Ascot Knight is the one at the top of the picture on the right. There you can see camera angles do make things very deceptive indeed, doesn't he? That's Ascot Knight on the extreme left. The rest have got seven and a half furlongs to go, and it's most welcome in the lead from Motley in second and Love the Groom third, with Ascot Knight racing very wide up on the outside. They pass the seven furlong pole, and next to the rails, uh, from the camera angle in the stands, we'd see Most Welcome in the lead, but our camera angle gives it to Ascot Knight. Ascot Knight from Most Welcome and Love the Groom and Motley. Then Anima Lord, and behind that one comes Sir Harry Lewis, uh, past the six furlong pole, and it's Ascot Knight on the outside of Most Welcome. Behind these comes Motley, then Love the Groom. Shady Heights tries to make a bit of ground. Anima Lord not done with it, halfway in the Matchmaker International, and Most Welcome on the inside of Ascot Knight. Not much to choose between the two now, and Most Welcome padded he pulls down his goggles. He's going to mean business, but Walter Swinburne comes down the centre of the track from where he won the previous race. So on the extreme right is Most Welcome and Pat Eddery ploughing a lone furrow. All the other jockeys in this top class race have come down the centre to stand side. And it's Ascot Knight who leads that bunch. Behind these comes Alan Malone, and Harry Lewis and Motley and Love the Groom and Shady Heights being ridden along. Chaumier won't be winning. They've got two and a half to go and Ascot Knight has it. Ascot Knight most welcome on the far side. Motley in behind these. Trip Teak the favourite travelling there. Very smoothly indeed. They've got two to race. And it's Ascot Knight and Motley tracked by Trip Teak. Most welcome is out on his own on towards the right. Then behind these comes to Harry Lewis just over a fur on to go. And it's Trip Teak now in the pale blue who throws down the challenge to Ascot Knight. And Trip Teak quickens up inside the final final and Trip Teak goes on by two by three to Ascot Knight going to be close to third but Trip Teak wins this what an incredible there Trip Teak Ascot Knight to Harry Lewis Trip Teak Ascot Knight second to Harry Lewis third Motley four most welcome stuck in the mud on the far side fifth behind these came Love the Groom in six Alan Malord seven Show Me Air eight Shady Heights nine and last of all was Sharp Noble and so the result of this matchmaker international it's a win for number four Trip Teak owned by Mr. Alan Claw, the 13 to 8 favourite, trained in France by Patrick Louis Bianco, ridden by Steve Cawthon, his 131st winner of the season. An incredible performance on a truly breathtaking uh, mare. Second was number five, Ascot Knight, ridden by Walter Swinburne. Third was number 12, Sir Harry Lewis, ridden by John Reed. So, Triptyque, third time lucky for her. Third two years ago, second last year, and with the mud that uh, she wanted, she came home in tremendous style. And there she is on the right of the picture with Ascot Knight, whom she beat here quite emphatically in the end. A truly, truly incredible racehorse is Triptyque, a five-year-old, and she is winning, well, her ninth race and well over half a million pounds in prize money. Truly incredible performance, and look at that, she'd hardly blow a candle out. Well, I, it's, a, it's a long time since I've seen Steve Cawthon look as happy as that. Uh, Steve and uh, his great friend Walter Swinburne uh, congratulating each other, I think, because uh, Walter's uh, inspired tactics going over to the, far, the wide far side, the far side, on the far side, uh, they, the tactics which were invented, I think, by Edward Hyde. I don't know about invented, but certainly Edward Hyde um, used to employ them sometimes when the ground was very soft. Steve Cawthon didn't go over to the far side until he got in the straight, and then all he needed to do was aim Trip Teak at Ascot Knight, and when he pressed the button, she really did it. Today, we thought she might be in her element, and she was. Well, the greatest five-year-old race mare in the world, without any doubt now, surely, Trip Teak. That's Ascot Knight, who's done his best to uphold the classic generation, but not nearly enough to beat the five And here she comes. Getting the welcome. She's richly deserved. 
not only how in England, but all over the world. Uh, Steve looks as though he's taken part in the champion hurdle or something like that, because of course he was tucked in behind until he chose to make his 